Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar on 2018 ResiLink Event Launch Annual Report Findings Review. I am Gabrielle, your host and moderator for today. Going on to the next slide. Today's speakers will be John Bobit, Senior Director and Shazeb Khan, Director Operations. John Bobit has more than 30 years of experience as a technologist, strategist, and solution advisor at firms such as KPMG, Resilink, Ariba, Aravo, CVM Solutions, Salesforce.com, and Oracle. He has authored numerous articles and blogs on sourcing, procurement, supplier management, and supply chain risk, and has been recognized as a pro to know by supply and demand chain executives. Shadeb Khan is a director at Resilink and brings in five years of experience as a supply chain risk advisory professional. He is responsible for heading the event watch department and providing continuous support to Resilink customers. Before getting started with the webinar, let me go over the housekeeping rules. Housekeeping rules, these presentation slides will be sent after the meeting. Please type your questions as they come up in the chat panel located in the right-hand side, and we'll have time for Q&A at the end. If we don't answer all of your questions today, don't worry, we'll reach out and answer them by the end of the day. Don't forget to download our annual event watch report at resilink.com forward slash event watch report. If you have further questions from today's presentation, please reach out to Shazade directly at shazade.com at resilink.com. Now I'll hand it over to John Bovitt, Senior Director. Thank you. Thanks, Gabby. Welcome, everyone. We're, uh, we're really excited for you to join us and excited to discuss the uh, the culmination of our work as we every year for the last, uh, I would say, five, six years, we've been publishing this annual report. In fact, we even started publishing uh, last year. We did a half year report and this year I think we'll do the same because we get so much interest around all this data that we gather over the course of the year and so much interest from uh, from our clients in terms of, you know, what are the, when you look at it holistically and all the data combined, does it give you any insight? So th this report is the culmination of that to look back on 2018 and how you could use that to, to, um, to your advantage as you plan for not only today, but in the future. So we'll review those findings, both myself and Shazab Khan, uh, who actually manages the operations for EventWatch. So we'll go over that. Um, basically, just kind of from an agenda perspective, um, I also I encourage everyone, I probably most of the people on the uh, attending right now have already downloaded the report, but as uh, uh, Gabby just mentioned, you can download it uh, right now or after the presentation today. But basically what we want to do is provide you kind of an at a glance, what were some of the aggregate uh, data points uh, from last year? We, uh, what are some of the top events by type or by time? So um, what are some of the trends by industry, by month, uh, by geography? And what are some of the top impactful events? And what are some of the recommend, recommend next steps that we've been advising our clients based on some of the findings? So we'll touch on all of these topics as we go through. And uh, as uh, Gabby had mentioned, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to provide them and we'll, we'll take as many as we can or follow up with you after today. So before we jump into the report findings, it's probably good, although a lot of the people attending right now are, are probably familiar with ResiLink Event Watch, but sometimes people are not. So let me kind of cover, touch on a few, uh, few points about the Event Watch service itself. And basically, it's a uh, global supply chain event monitoring service um, that runs 24 by 7 monitoring you know, over 100,000 public and private sources across, you know, lots of languages, across lots of different event types, whether it's man-made uh, or natural disasters, uh, uh, compliance, uh, change of ownership, M&A activity. It could be lots of different types of events. But we, we use a combination of artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, data aggregation, and then eventually screened by risk experts to reduce the noise and give, give our clients very precise events. Um, and then also provides as part of the event watch service, what also makes it interesting is not only the events themselves, but then the, the impacts and the lessons learned we can take out of those impacts. And um, also who receives these are the suppliers, your suppliers are our client suppliers uh, and their sub tier suppliers so that we can then assess when we do these reports and these analysis, 
Um, what have been the responses to those suppliers? How have they responded? You know, how long did it take them to respond? So we get a, a lot of uh, information around this when we produce the report. And um, but uh, around the uh, the uh, event watch product and service itself, there's also this element of uh, supplier response and tracking those responses. The, there's an event war room um, and a simulation planner, what if planner, and there's also a mobile application to receive the notices. So this kind of makes up what event watch is the service overall. Okay. Um, from a uh, just at a high level, there are multiple notif. It's important to remember there are multiple notifications and alerts that come out of uh, Event Watch. Um, at a high level, there's kind of generic not notifications, ones that like here's the event, here's an update to that event, uh, or you know here's a uh, you know that includes kind of an overview, what our analysis is, who it's potentially impacting by industry, by commodity area by um, and then also provides kind of general links to the source of, of the alert and then um, there's also this element of there's actually an impact that we've detected to a particular client so the client will receive a specific impact alert and that would that would include you know things like what pro what what sites products parts uh, revenue uh, that are potentially impacted by that alert that that came out in the first hand and then so that that comes out as well and then there's this idea that clients can go into this uh, virtual war room and run simulations well what if it got worse what if uh, it expanded what sub tiers what you know are potentially at risk and then start taking mitigation action so that's the service at a, at a kind of high level conceptual view if you have any questions or need more uh, information please let us know and the another important element is you know what is an event versus an impact alert and um, it's important to distinguish because one is again a notification that something occurred and another is a very specific to a particular client uh, around you know what products parts suppliers sites so forth are potentially impacted and those, those are two different kind of classifications and we talk about the reason that it's important to understand in this context is that um, we, we distinguish those in our findings. So in the report and what we'll talk about today, and in the report, if you uh, read that as a follow-up, is that we distinguish between you know, an impact alert versus a general alert or an event, okay? So it's important uh, to distinguish those. With that, uh, Shazade, what I'll turn it over to you to start talking through some of the findings. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Thank you everyone for joining. Um, we are excited. Uh, we are very proud of this report and we are very excited that you guys uh, join us um, to go through this, um, uh, you know, the high level findings of the report. I would highly encourage everyone to download the report because it will provide you further uh, insights into your industrial verticals um, and, and you will be able to compare your industry with other industries. You will be able to compare regions. Uh, you will be able to compare different risk types. So um, it, it, you know, it, I would highly encourage everyone to download the report. This is just at a glance. Uh, in 2018, we notified 2,629 events, uh, about six, um, you know, an average a day. Out of uh, 2,629 events, 907 events had uh, potential impact to suppliers' sites, to mapped sites. So 907 events were impact events, which is around 35% of the total. These 907 impact events flagged around 58,000 N-tier sites and one interesting observation in uh, 2018 annual report is that only 12% of the manufacturing sites that were flagged in 2018 have an alternate site available. Uh, different industries have different uh, insights. Uh, you, if, if you download the report, you will be able to see what percentage of alternate sites your industry has uh, and, and how many parts, how many sites, 
uh, were flagged for your specific industry. Next slide. Before I go into the findings uh, of the report, uh, I, I want to make sure that we are clear on the methodology. Uh, there are a lot of trends uh, that you can find in the report, but it, it's important that we clear our methodology as well. The increases and decreases in the number of uh, notices sent for different risk types can also depend on the number of industrial verticals that Resilink uh, onboarded in 2018. We onboarded four new industries, um, which includes aerospace and defense, furnishing goods, consumer goods, and food and beverage. We also added some new risk types, uh, which contributed to the total um, number of events notified in 2018. And these are legal actions and settlements and profit warnings. We also refined some uh, thresholds for some event types. For example, um, we, we, we changed our criteria for volcanic activity. We now notify every volcanic activity uh, happening around the world, uh, you know, uh, just uh, keeping in our mind that it can impact air uh, transportation um, in any region. Even if we don't have sites uh, mapped in that region, we would still notify going forward. Our customers keep adding more and more data. They keep mapping more suppliers. Uh, they keep expanding into uh, newer regions. Then when they survey their suppliers to our uh, supply chain visibility module, uh, suppliers provide sites into newer regions. Uh, for example, we did not have any sites in Burkina Faso. In 2018, we mapped our first site in that country, and now we monitor that country as well. So as our database grows, we, we, you know, we go into newer regions. Uh, that can also contribute to total number of events notified. Plus, Resilink research information keeps growing as well. Uh, we keep researching and adding more and more manufacturers, more and more uh, supplier sites, sub-tiers. Uh, so as we grow into uh, you know, uh, new regions, as we grow into newer verticals, it can contribute to um, the total number of events we notify. This slide just provides you uh, some visibility into what was the top uh, event type or risk type notified or most frequently notified. Um, the top five include merger and acquisition, factory fires and explosions, reorganization management change, which actually made to uh, top five the first time. Then we have factory shutdowns and explosions and regulatory change. Uh, an interesting observation in regulatory change uh, is that uh, you know, the, the number of uh, events notified increased by 640%. Other than top five, we also observed some significant increases in protest and riots, political uh, instabilities. Uh, we also um, observed a significant increase in volcanic activities, almost all event types in the top 10 recorded increases. Cyber attacks, um, it, it's very interesting that cyber attacks decreased in the number of events that happened in 2018, but uh, there were some very costly cyber attacks that we recorded. Uh, for example, the uh, DSMC cyber attack, which affected a lot of a lot of companies around the world, especially high-tech sector, and TSMC itself uh, reported $153 million loss just from that cyber attack. Um, other observations within that module, cyber attack module, are that you know, um, some medical devices industry is also very, um, uh, was very much affected uh, due to cyber attacks. Then we have 
uh, aerospace industry that saw some significant increase in cyber attack events. Um, government sector, uh, they've, they've seen some um, uh, cyber attack events in 2018, and they've actually spent a lot of, a lot of money in, in the mitigation of cyber attacks. Then we have mining industry that was very vulnerable to cyber attacks in 2018. How the top five uh, compare to um, 2017? Factory fires uh, and explosion was the most frequently notified risk type in 2017. Uh, merger and acquisition took over the top spot in 2018. A lot of companies, um, they, uh, they consider merger and acquisition events as just FYI events, but uh, we have a lot of customers who have a lot of focus on merger and acquisition events uh, and the mitigation strategies, how the consolidation of two supply chains or in some cases multiple supply chains uh, proceed. Customers like Our customers like to monitor these uh, very closely. Then the, the factory fire risk type um, is on the second in 2018. There was uh, a significant increase um, in, in the number of factory fires notified from 2018, but it moved to second spot. Reorganization management changed. This covers uh, re restructuring of the companies, restructuring of uh, hierarchical organizations, uh, management changes. If a leader is leaving, if a leader is resigning, if a leader is getting arrested, um, if, if a leader is getting appointed, such kind of events are covered under this risk type. Uh, it made to top five first time in 2018. Then we have business sales and spin-offs and factory shutdown at fourth and fifth spot. In 2018, life sciences industry was uh, most frequently disrupted. Um, it it, it uh, took over the top spot uh, from automotive, moving the automotive industry uh, at the second uh, position in 2018. Then we have high tech uh, most frequently disrupted, um, aerospace, consumer goods, food and beverage, furnishing goods, they were new verticals that were onboarded in 2018, which is why you, we don't have data for them uh, and, you know, to compare in 2017. There are some very interesting observations um, in the report itself, uh, providing some uh, additional visibility into, uh, into site, into supplier site part level into um, recovery time into um, and, and, and into different factors uh, that we observe for different industries if you download the report uh, it will provide you more visibility into your vertical in 2018 the last two quarters observed significant increase in the number of events and the the risk type um, that was most frequently notified in, in the last two quarter was merger and acquisition, um, followed by factory fires. But mer merger and acquisition, there were a lot of closings that happened. There were a lot of new um, um, deals that were announced in last two quarters in 2018. North America was the most disrupted, uh, frequently disrupted region in 2017. Uh, it, it, it is, uh, even in 2018, it, it um, kept its spot at the top. It's most frequently disrupted uh, by man-made events. But if you look at the, the naturally caused events in 2018, it was Asia that was most frequently disrupted. Um, uh, an observation in 2017 data was um, actually an alarming observation that 
North America was most frequently disrupted by man-made and natural disaster or naturally caused events. But in 2018, uh, in terms of naturally caused events, Asia took the top spot. North America and Europe, they were both, uh, both have merger and acquisitions at the top uh, as risk types, um, followed by factory fires. But if you look at Asia, factory fire was the most uh, common risk type followed by earthquake, hurricane, uh, merger and acquisition in Asia was fourth, and then uh, compliance uh, activities, for example, FDA, EMA, uh, other product compliance uh, or regulatory events at, at fifth in Asia. Now, before I, I explain this slide, I will just uh, revise what John explained uh, uh, in the first couple of slides, the difference between events and impact events. Uh, the way the, the Event Watch program is structured, we notify you about every event happening around your industry or every event happening around a vertical that serves into your industry. We keep you informed what's happening in your verticals. Now, in the process of notifying you about those events, there's a 35% chance that one of the events will affect your supplier site, your, your mapped supplier site. In 2018, we notified 2,629 events. 35% of those events had uh, a supplier site flagged or a supplier site potentially affected. Now, we call the, the events that flag your supplier site, uh, we call them impact events. And the difference between events and impact events is that event is just informing you about what's happening in your industry. It may not have a direct impact to uh, your supplier site where the impact event is actually um, providing you visibility into the site parts, recovery time, um, your suppliers, your sub-tiers that were flagged in that event. Now, in 2018, if we compare events with impact events, uh, we can see that merger and acquisition was still the top risk type, uh, followed by earthquakes, um, business sales, spin-off, factory fire, explosions, in the process of notifying impact events, uh, we flagged 66, uh, the total number of sites, which is 58,000 sites, 66% of them were manufacturing sites. We, we flagged around 47 different site activities in 2018 uh, as potentially affected merger and, uh, sorry, manufacturing was the top at 66%, followed by others. Uh, others include uh, around uh, 42 different activities. Then we have final assembly and test, uh, assembly, wafer fabrication, and warehouse. Some further insights into regional data, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a total of 1,155 events were notified in North America, um, which, which had 450 impact events, meaning um, at least one supplier site or maybe multiple sites were flagged in 450 events of 1,155 events. Number of N-tier sites flagged in North America was around 26,000 and average time to recovery 25 weeks. Uh, Europe, we notified 586 events, 13 had impact, uh, a tight 163 N-tier sites, um, uh, 22 uh, total time to recovery, uh, 22 weeks. Uh, Asia, 
652 events in total, 220 impact events, uh, around 20,000 end-tier sites, uh, 22 weeks um, as average time to recovery. If you download the report, you will, you will see more visibility into this data. You will have more uh, trends that you can uh, develop from this report. Uh, more more insights into what's going on, what what we uh, we are expecting from 2019 going forward. We always provide you with the top five uh, most significant supply chain events. In 2018, Hurricane Michael, uh, bomb cyclone, the the snowstorm in the north. Um, America and in, in actually on the East Coast USA, Hurricane Florence, uh, then 6.1 magnitude earthquake that hit Taiwan in February. There were a couple of 6. Point, sorry, 6.1 magnitude earthquakes in Taiwan in, in 2018, but the one that happened in, in February was the most significant one because of its uh, location, because of the depth. Um, then we have Typhoon Manghut. Uh, for these five events, we received 54 uh, confirmations, uh, 54 suppliers confirmed that they were affected because of these events and they provided time to recovery to their customers through Resilink uh, supplier impact confirmation feature. Thank, thanks, Shazab. I think um, uh, as we as we look and analyze the data, you know, one of the things there's a lot of, of valuable uh, data points and a, a lot of. We also this year was a, the first year that we we also put in some specific kind of uh, call them cutouts in the report, um, covering specific examples, calling out uh, you know the. Some of the cyber cyber event points, as an example, that uh, Shazade mentioned, or the some M and A or uh, Brexit, and some uh, some other examples um, in analyzing results out of uh, China and some of the regulatory and and uh, tariff things uh, elements. And one of the things we we want to do as coming out of this report is you know also give some recommendations and and. Um, I think looking at not only this last year comparing to the previous year, 2017, but look to being forward looking as well as even looking farther back, there's definitely some and, and some best practices that, that we we advise our, our clients to to leverage this data. And the first is, you know, prepare. I think the clients that are able to look at the past and look at where they are, their hot spots where their supply chain is coming from, not just their suppliers, but their, those supplier suppliers, their sub-tiers, and looking at the, the common event types like factory fire, hurricanes, um, and looking at where their supply chain uh, falls, is you can actually do some what-if analysis and be prepared. You can, um, the things that you can do to uh, ensure that these things don't impact you, these things are still going to occur, and we know you know, from every year so far, we've seen a growth. So these things are happening at, at an ever increasing rate. But through preparation, you can do things like uh, capacity planning. You can do things like ensuring that your uh, key suppliers in these areas that are very highly likely to be impacted uh, from past years have adequate fire protection, um, have uh, adequate, uh, you know, uh, failover sites and failover plans, business recovery plans. So these are things that you can do from a proactive to look at your supply chain and ensure these things don't impact you. From past years, we know that things like if a power outage w were to occur, um, and they do occur quite often, and factory fires is another good example, um, if you don't have a backup plan or your suppliers don't have a backup plan, um, chances are that it's going to be impactful to you. I mean, just, uh, you know, ask, there's some really prominent ones such as Ford that, in, that not only impacted Ford at a factory fire, but impacted cross industry, cross companies. So it, these things, when they do happen, can be very impactful. So 
from preparation, you can ensure uh, and, uh, you know that these things don't impact impact you. And then the other the other thing that we recommend too, coming out of this, is you know review careful re review your single sourced parts and know the risks. Look at where they're coming from and your resourcing strategies so that you can um, take be proactive. Take a very careful look. Look at the data. Look at what's there and where you're, where this information is coming from. Because one thing we learned is that these things are occurring. But even with the tariffs or Brexit or some of these things that you know we all can't control, but what we can do is look and see and be proactive and analyze where the impacts are. We saw you know case after case, client after client this year of these things that you know were able, they were, by looking at the data and analyzing, being proactive, they were able to avert you know potential problems, potential disruptions. So this allows you know by taking a very simple approach but a very powerful approach, you can turn you know this data and this and this analysis into insights and action, and that's what we we really encourage uh, the findings. And one of the things as being uh, that we're also espousing, if if you're not a current uh, Resolink client and are interested in in utilizing a uh, event watch from a trial situation, please uh, go to uh, Resolink.com and sign up for the trial. We're uh, we're happy to get get more clients, you know, trying it out because you know we think it's uh, you know world class and it can help you uh, and help your business. So, um, Gabby, have we? Uh, I think I, I think we've seen a few questions come in. Are there any uh, particular there? I think I should we take take a couple questions before we wrap up. Yeah. So just to know, everybody, we're at the end. So um, note the link that you can download the annual report. And right now, for answering questions, if you have not done so already, please type them in now. And we'll just pause a bit right now for any more questions coming in. I think one one question that uh, actually we we had uh, uh, leading in is that and, and Shazay maybe you and I we we finished a, a little faster than we anticipated probably because I'm I'm a fast talker I apologize Shazay but one of the things is um, around the impact notifications and when when suppliers can respond can we talk a little bit about that because that that what First off, what is? Can we talk a little bit more depth around what that process is from a, you know, supplier uh, responding to a, a potential impact event, and how? Uh, what data do we ca gather from that? Can maybe could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So um, actually, uh, it, it's a very good question, John, because there are there is a new feature that was added in 2018 to expand the scope of this feature. So when a customer maps uh, a supplier site or maybe multiple supplier sites, or when a customer joins Resilink and decides to use Resilink research data uh, for their suppliers. For example, Resilink has 12, 13 sites for one of uh, customer suppliers and customer decided to start monitoring them from day one. Or a customer joins ResLink and collects data directly from the supplier using ResLink's supply chain visibility module, or maybe any other module that ResLink offers. Now, the data comes in through all these sources, and now customer is monitoring those supplier sites. If an event happens, customer has an option to uh, let ResLink contact those suppliers on behalf of the customer when an event happens and collect impact confirmation. So as soon an event happens, we notify the customer, but we also notify their suppliers that this event happened and the customer is looking for impact confirmation from you. Are you impacted, or not impacted? Now on the supplier side, they have multiple ways to respond to that uh, notification. They can either respond directly via email, directly from the notification they received, or they can respond via Resilink mobile app that they have, um, or they can log into Resilink portal and respond to that customer request from the Resilink portal. 
when a supplier is impacted, they can respond by just clicking on a button. They click on a button within the email they receive, and all of their customers who are looking for a response for a site, they they uh, they get you know notified, and the events automatically get gets closed on both supplier and customer's end. But if the supplier is impacted, then supplier has a way to log into the portal and tailor its response for different customers. For example, if the site is impacted, but out of the five customers requesting for the response, only two of them are affected, then customer can tailor the response for those two, let them know that, yes, I am impacted, this is the reason why I'm impacted, and also provides recovery time that it's going to take me two to three weeks to fix this. And then to the rest of three customers, as the supplier can say, no, I am not impacted for you. So it, it's a... Now, the, the new feature that we added to uh, supplier confirmation, impact confirmation feature in 2018 is that the customer can now, uh, you know, um, customize this feature for Resilink research and customer provided data as well. So customer can provide their own data, provide supplier contact, and Resilink system will start contacting that supplier um, that supplier contact when an event happens. Thanks, thanks, Shazayev. I think another question I just saw, which is a, also an interesting question, I think for 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 you, I and the team here, is you know, um, will you be offering this report more frequently than um, than just the year? We also, uh, uh, as I mentioned too earlier, we did a half year. For 20, the first half of 2018 last year, and I guess one question for the group, and we can even do a polling question after the fact, is you know is there value in 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 having just even a sh smaller report, you know, coming out even quarterly? Is that helpful? I think uh, yeah. I'd be interested. I think Shadeb and I, I think we're in unison. We'd love to get uh, you know. Uh, uh, feedback from uh, from the audience in terms of you know would you be interested in receiving you know more frequent updates because what we're seeing is that now we're already you know uh, finishing up Q1 and we're already starting to see some trends from from that so um, but thank, thanks thanks Jose I think that that was great um, uh, Gabby let me know if there's any other uh, particular questions. Uh, I see a question um, regarding suppliers responding to these um, impact notifications. Have there any been any updates to uh, make that more efficient or easy for suppliers? Yes. Um, the, the email feature, responding directly via email, um, it's, it's applicable, it's mobile applicable as well. So if supplier receives that impact email, impact confirmation email on iOS or Android device, uh, with the hit of a button, they can respond back. Uh, so, and, and since we implemented this feature, we have uh, seen a significant increase in the percentage of uh, suppliers responding to events. Uh, suppliers also have access to Razzling mobile app. There is no, no cost, no charge for suppliers. Um, they also have access to Resilink portal uh, where, where they see a lot of analytics based on their, their data that they provided to different customers through Resilink portal. Uh, a lot of uh, insights, um, uh, supply chain insights that are actually uh, free of cost for suppliers. Wow, that's great. All right, so I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, That's great. So, yeah, we can go to the next slide. Sure. So if you have any additional questions, please do send them our way. Um, right on the screen is Shazabe's email address one more time. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today's webinar. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.